Donny Cates and Nick Klein continuing Donald Blake's awesome murder-fueled romp through Midgard as the villain sets his sights on the people who have possessed the Odin Force, with his newest target being Jane Foster. Again, Donny Cates continues to deliver a fucking awesome, character-driven arc for a character many others wrote off or forgot about completely. I love the idea that Donald has this righteous anger to him. I understand why he feels so slighted by Thor, who all but abandoned him, and Odin, who held him in captivity for all his manufactured and fake life. You can feel his anger and his sadness in his words, and it lends itself to some really tense situations, in this case, the dinner with Jane. They reveal as well that Donald has gaps in his his memory as well and can't remember certain things as Thor, like not knowing Jane was Thor once was really great and leads to a great moment between him and Jane where he knows he can't kill the one person who was always kind to him. Asgard's predicament was also a lot of fun, again going kind of against the grain which I thought they were going to be battling in the Dimension Blood and so, sort of fighting for survival, but it's actually them being welcomed into a Dimension Blood by the people that live there and sort of brought into this community and sort of given safe haven. Has me wondering if maybe that was part of Donald's plan anyway, to keep them safe while he goes on his murder spree so none of them get in his way and he's forced to kill them. I'm intrigued to find out if that actually was the case and I have a feeling we will in the coming issues. Nick Klein's artwork continues to wow and lend a really wonderful grittiness to Donnie's larger than life fantasy story. I loved the designs he did for the Dimension Blood last issue as well as what we saw of it here with giant monster corpses and little flying goat men. His work in the dinner scenes were really uncomparable and I love how it was all steeped in this blood red haze by colorist Matt Wilson, mirroring Donald's untethered rage boiling over. I'm looking forward to seeing what designs he has in store for Throg and his swampy realm next issue seeing as the little tease we got at the end made it look really interesting and completely different to what we've seen before in the book. Thor issue 11 was another win for Donny Cates and Nick Klein, continuing Donald Blake's awesome and complex new story. I love the work Donny is putting into a character everyone disregarded and forgot about and turning him into a legitimate new villain for Thor to go up against, but also using him as a platform to show the problems gods like Thor and Odin have with disregarding their mistakes and not trying to face them. I can't wait for the next issue and what other trouble Donald Blake will be getting into when he fights Throg. I'm going to give this issue a 10 out of 10. Thor issue 11 finds Donald Blake having dinner with Jane Foster, telling her how good it feels and how it's been like a reawakening for him to be there. He wants to know what's new with Jane, but the woman can see something is different about the man. Happy to see him, but the last time she saw him, he was heading off to be king. Donald plays it off, knowing that the crown fit the way it was meant to, and him showing up like this might mean that he's a little bit of a loon. Jane touches his hand, knowing that she didn't mean to act like she's not happy to see him, but she knows Donald doesn't seem happy to either. Donald admits that it's been a challenging transition knowing both he and Thor in the past have shared thoughts but now there are holes in his memory and he cannot remember things and Thor's voice sounds so far away, almost like he's somewhere where he can't follow. Thor meanwhile tries to blast himself out of the realm, obliterating a huge tract of land in the process of contacting his father and the kings. Soon Thor is met by Radatosk, the Chaos God. Thor believed the being was on Midgard, but the being says that as a Chaos God, God, watching Thor's reign has been such a delight. Thor asks the being for his help, asking him to tell his people what has happened, but the Chaos God knows that's not possible, seeing as Asgard is empty. In Dimension Blood, the people of Asgard are thriving, having been helped by the people of the world who were helped by Thor during the Bone Wars. Sif finds it all insane, knowing that they need to find a way home, but the little goat men tell the story of a drunk Thor stopping Doctor Strange's bunnies, making her believe this place is even more insane than she thought. She leaves Volstag and his feast to visit Beta Ray Bill, who weakly tells the woman that he doesn't want her pity, thinking that he's not deserving of it since he should have protected them all. Sif says that Beta doesn't need to protect her, so Bill apologizes, shooing away the Goatman healers as he tries to tell her he has a way to get home. He reveals that Lockjaw was on Asgard when Donald attacked, and if they find him, they can teleport away. Thori, however, says that Lockjaw left, only now remembering that the dog said that his friend was in trouble 
trouble and death was coming, so Lockjaw told Thori that he is leaving and the dog only just remembered. Donald and Jane's dinner meanwhile continues with Jane telling Donald about her work and how it's quite fulfilling to be the last person to guide people to their final homes. Donald admits that's why he's there, to see a friendly face along the way. Jane asks how long he's been back, so he tells her that he's been bouncing around, connecting up with some other old friends, wanting to ask her if she wouldn't happen to know where Odin is these days. Jane doesn't know, knowing that when she was Thor, they never really got along. This information shocks Donald, who didn't know that she was Thor. As Jane reminds him that she was Thor for a spell, Donald grabs a steak knife, plunging it into her hand and sucking the Odin force from her. He comes back to reality, snapping himself out of his daze, quickly gathering his things and saying goodbyes to the unhurt Jane. A Ensuring she never said anything wrong to him. He's just got some other friends to visit. Jane asks if there's anything she can do, but he cuts her off, telling her that there is nothing. He does tell Jane that she was always good to him and loved him once, not Thor, and she doesn't belong in a morgue for that. Later, Jane returns to work, having been called in for an important autopsy. Rudy tells her that this is serious and needs her to look at something, knowing that he's seen some bad things in his time, but this is worse. He apologizes to Jane as he shows her the body of Roger Norvell, known to Jane as the hero Red Norvell. Jane heads to the bathroom, vomiting before calming herself, splashing water on her face and knowing Donald would never do this and it's not him behind this. But upon looking at her reflection, she can see that death is close to her. Elsewhere, a tired and injured Donald Blake smashes his way through a swamp, calling for someone to come out, knowing that he's not scared of him. Donald is struck by lightning as Throg, who is accompanied by Lockjaw, says that he isn't hiding, he's hunting and it's time for Donald Blake to get up and run. Blake to get